The first thing we're going to do is create a sketch, and I'll do the top plane since we're effectively looking down at this. Now one thing we could do is we could include a canvas. So since I do have a snapshot of what I'm trying to create, I'll go grab that design, drag, drag that onto the top plane or top face, and then we can kind of eyeball where we want the origin to go. It would work in a lot of different spots. can finish it, go to the canvas, right click, choose calibrate, and then I'm going to choose an easy to find dimension. So from here to here is 50. Great. So now in our first sketch, we can create a new sketch actually since we dropped in that canvas, that's fine. My general rule of thumb, I want to do solids first. I'm going to go back to the canvas, um, just reorient it, just to make it a little bit a little bit better. But this is not critical at all. It's just more if you want to like save a tiny bit of time, save a little bit of energy by doing closer to a trace. In our new sketch, go back to it. So first I create this arc and then a line. And then you can do the line to arc trick that will include tangency. This goes up, do another arc. I like the line to arc trick because it's a little faster but also because it adds that tangency constraint automatically. These arcs that are going to get mirrored can be kind of problematic sometimes um, trying to get an arc so I actually usually prefer to just do the full arc there but we can do it either way. We just may have to come back and kind of work with it a little bit to get it just right. Let's turn off the well leave the canvas on just because it's got the dimensions handy for us. I really like that. This is going to shift some things. Make sure that these are tangent. Let's try to grab any of the easy to find dimensions real quick. We can place a construction circle right here just so we have this as a reference or we can leave it in. This is 25 from overall from this center point to this center point of this arc. The horizontal distance is 65 plus 55. When I drag blue lines, I can see stuff that's still moving. So these are the things that still need some dimensions and constraints. So this point goes to this line, coincident. This is 40 from here to here. This is 10. The overall width is 100. So we'll do here to here is 50, or we can double it making sure there is symmetry here. I assumed there was symmetry. Make sure this is tangent. Here to here, so these two vertical lines is 50. Guess that's extra now at this point. It's not, doesn't, it's not needed. 25, not needed. So there's a point right here we can infer. So if we go to the point, we can put a point right here if we want. And this point lines up with this center point. It's vertical. But also I know that this radius from here to here is six. So this distance from here to here to the origin is six or to the edge of this arc. That helped. This is tangent. What moves? That's tangent. Does this move? Yep. The vertical distance is 30. From here to here is 30. Looking like if we were to hide the canvas, Looks pretty good, so we can can put a solid line. I'm going to sketch mirror this whole thing across this line right here. Great. So this is now symmetric, and so all of these things will update if we make any changes to our model. We know that this, if we were to extrude this, the depth is 23. Now that we have this solid, we can come in and do the slot cutout. We can do these holes and this uh, little raised profile or rim, do these holes. Now we could have done these sketched holes here. It's kind of up to you. If you know that this is as simple as it's going to be, you can add these features secondary or you can do it in the original sketch. The thing to be aware of is if you have other features that are going to interrupt each other, sometimes it's better to do all your cuts towards the end. So in this case, we can just start a new sketch and I can go to the whole command or I can just simply sketch some circles. I'm going to touch the arc and then touch the center points 
to find them. I'm going to drop in their dimensions, which are 12. And I could set that these two are equal so that I don't have to dimension both. can cut these out. I'll do all the way through just to make sure if that's the in design intent is that these always go all the way through even if this gets thicker or thinner. And now from this side we can create a sketch and do our hole and the dimension, the diameter. So we know to the edge is 15. The diameter is also 15. We'll cut that through all the way. But let's look at it. Let's go back to our sketch, edit sketch. What am I missing, right? The vertical distance. Looks like it's inferred that it's centered. So I'll sketch here. Sketch a center line right in the middle, drag, drop it on, and then update the cut hole. Okay, drag in my slot, and then let's just rough, just roughing it. And then I know that the radius is six. I know that the distance from here to here is 55. I know that that should be lined up. I, I sketched this at the origin, this point or midpoint of this arc. So we'll cut this out also all the way through. If I go back to my original sketch, do I want to reuse this hole that I already did? The hole itself is actually a 16 diameter. We could mirror that over and then cut the holes out and then add the rims, or we can do it again. We can also turn on this sketch and simply reuse it. So if I start a sketch here, I can just hit P for project, and it'll re-sketch that for me right on the top face if we want to do it from the top face. And let's go ahead and mirror that. Search for mirror, and let's cut these out. I believe that's what the design is, that it wants these holes cut out all the way through, and then offset rim applied. So I'm going to sketch, do an offset of four, it looks like. And we'll do this one as well. Chain is turned off. Try again, select this. Okay, it doesn't want me to do two at once. Right click, repeat, four, here we go. And this comes up five. Do both at the same time, same depth. Now let's go back. I think I did the offsets a little too big. Yeah, I did, because I was counting diameter. The diameter of this circle I know is 20. So when I click it, it should say 20. It was 24, so I did my math wrong there. These are two if you want to do the offset. It updates. That looks better. Click it. It's a 20 millimeter. Terrific. Turn off the sketches for a second. Hey, I hope you enjoyed following along. I'll try to reference where this exercise came in from. I know it was... But I mean, this was an email from some of my community, but I'll try to share um, where they got the exercise from. See you guys in the next video.